Come have a seat in the Scald Circle and hear the tale of Fardarig and Donegal, as told by Casimir. Before we begin our tale, did you know that we release news stories for free every week on Wednesdays? Be certain to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, Spotify, Podbean, or whatever your favorite podcast app is. That way, you'll never miss out when we release free bonus stories of the days of the week. Never forget, visit thescaldcircle.com to stay up to date with all of our current developments. And to also visit our story archive, sorted by origin and region. Now then, this begins the tale of Hard Eric and Donegal. Pad Diver the Tinker was a man well accustomed to the wandering life, and to strange shelters. He had shared the beggar's blanket in smoky cabins, he had crouched beside the still in many a nook and corner where poutine was made in the wild in Shown Mountains. He'd even slept in the bare heather or on a ditch with no roof over him but the vault of the heaven. Yet, were all his nights of adventure tame and commonplace when compared with one especial night. During the day preceding that night, he had mended all the kettles and salts pans in Movel and Greencastle and was on his way to Kuldaf when the night overtook him on a lonely mountain road. He knocked at one door after another asking for an ice lodging while he jingled the halfpence in his pocket but everywhere refused. Where was the boasted hospitality of Inhausen, which he had never before known to fail? It was of no use to be able to pay when the people seemed so churlish. Thus thinking, he made his way towards a light a little further on and knocked at another cabin door. An old man and woman were seated at one each side of the fire. Will you be pleased to give me a nice lodging, sir, said Pat respectively. Can you tell a story, returned the old man. No, then, sir, I can I say I'm good at storytelling, replied the puzzle tinker. Then you mind just gang a further, for none but them that can tell a story will get in here. This reply was made in so decided a tone that Pat did not attempt to repeat his appeal, but turned away reluctantly to resume his weary journey. A story indeed, muttered he, old wise fables to please the weans. As he took up his bundle of tinkering implements, he observed a barn standing rather behind the dwelling house, and, aided by the rising moon, he made his way toward it. It was a clean, roomy barn, with piled up heap of straw in one corner. Here was a shelter not to be despised. So Pat crept under the straw and soon was asleep. He could not have slept very long when he was awakened by the tramp of feet, and peeping cautiously through a crevice in the straw covering, he saw four immensely tall men enter the barn dragging a body, which they threw roughly upon the floor. They next lighted a fire in the middle of the barn and fastened the corpse by the feet with a great rope to a beam in the roof. One of them began to turn it slowly before the fire. Come on, said he, addressing a gigantic fellow, the tallest of the four. I'm tired. You be to take your turn. Thanks and troth, I'll turn him no more, replied the big man. There's Pat Driver under the straw. Why wouldn't he take his turn? With hideous clamor, the four men called the wretched Pat, who, seeing there was no escape, thought it was his wisest plan to come forth as he was hidden. Now, Pat, said they, you'll turn the corpse, but if you let him burn, you'll be tied up there and roasted in his place. Pat's hair stood on end, and the cold perspiration poured from his forehead, but there was nothing for it but to perform his dreadful task. Seeing him fairly embarked in it, the tall man went away. Soon, however, the flames rose so high as to singe the rope, and the corpse fell with a great thud upon the fire, scattering ashes and embers and extracting a howl of anguish from the miserable crook, who rushed to the door and ran for his life. He ran on until he was ready to drop with fatigue when seeing a drain overgrown with tall, rank grass, he thought he would creep in there and lie hidden till morning. But he was not many minutes in the drain before he heard the heavy tramping again, and the four men came up with their burthen, which they laid down at the edge of the drain. I'm tired, said one to the giant. It's your turn to carry him a pace now. Axe and troth, I'll carry him no more, replied he. But there's Pat Driver in the drain. Why wouldn't he come out and take his turn? Come out, Pat, come out, roared all the men and Pat, almost dead with fright, crept out. He staggered under the weight of the corpse until he reached Skelton Abbey, a ruin festooned with ivy where the brown owl hooted all night, and the forgotten dead slept around the walls under dense matted tangles of brambles and benweed. 
no one ever buried there now. But Pat's tall companions turned into the wild graveyard and began digging a grave. Pat, seeing them thus engaged, thought he might once again try to escape, and climbed up into a hawthorn tree in the fence, hoping to be hidden in the boughs. I'm tired, said the man who was digging the grave. Here, take the spade, addressing the big man. It's your turn. Axe and troth, it's not my turn, replied he, as before. There's Pat Driver in the tree. Why wouldn't he come and take his turn? Pat came down to take the spade. But just then, the cocks in the little farmyard and cabins around the abbey began to crow, and the men looked at one another. We must go, said they, as well as it is for you, Pat Driver, that the cocks crowed. For if they had not, you'd have just been bundled into that grave with the corpse. Two months passed, and Pat had wandered far and wide over the county Donegal, when he chanced to arrive at Rapo during a fair. Among the crowd that filled the diamond, he came suddenly upon the big man. How are you, Pat Driver? said he, bending down to look into the tinker's face. You've the advantage of me, sir, for I'm not the pleasure of knowing you, faltered Pat. Do you not know me, Pat? he whispered. When you go back to Inhausen, you'll have a story to tell. And that is the tale of Far Derrick and Donegal. Thank you for listening to our story. If you enjoyed it, please take a look at our Patreon page to learn how you can earn great rewards while also supporting us. We appreciate even the smallest of contributions they allow us to continue to release new stories every week for free on Wednesdays, and also to provide bonus stories for your listening pleasure. We also want to give a special thanks to Cat for the support this month. It means the world to us. Visit us at theskullcircle.com to view our story archive, sorted by origin and region, and to stay up to date with all of our current developments. Once again, thank you for listening to our story.